One of my favorite things about history is the fact that over time, people have really not changed that much. People 2,000 years ago were writing nasty reviews for products, they were sending love letters, and they were making little toys and collars for their pets. For millennia, humanity has lived, laughed, died, been angry, been sad, have fallen in love and gone to war, and I love, I just love humanity in all of its messed up glory. One other thing that has prevailed through human history is marketing. It's been around for so long that if you were to go to the archaeological site known as Pompeii and take a look at the uh, frescoes and murals in a lot of the establishments, you would see advertisements for everything from sex work to fast food restaurants. Recently though, I have been digging through a lot of old newspapers for a new exhibit for my work, and I have quite often just been kind of been taking a second and pausing and kind of reading through some of the old advertisements. Some of the products are obviously a little bit out of date as corsets and uh, typewriters uh, do not appeal to the general public in 2022, but there were a surprising number of advertisements that I actually recognize because there's still advertisements for those products today. If you have followed this channel for a while or if you have listened to Mortals Podcast, you know that I am very interested in material cultural history, and that this is kind of my jam. So I wanted to talk about some of these products that I found, that I recognized, and share them with you, and kind of talk about the history of some very random items. So all of the products that I've chosen today are fairly common household items. You probably have these in your kitchen or in your bathroom or even in your pantry and that might be part of the reason why they have stuck around for so long is because, you know, everybody uses them almost every day or on a fairly regular basis. For example, uh, most people brush their teeth and they usually use toothpaste or if you were in the 19th century, you might also use tooth powder. And I don't know about you, but one of the first companies that comes to mind when I think of toothpaste is Colgate. So it was really surprising to me to learn that Colgate was actually founded in 1806, making it 116 years old. When Cutie Katie makes a scene, she wears a smile brush three ways clean. Cleaner breath, cleaner face, cleaner teeth, three ways clean is Colgate clean. The company was founded by a man by the name of William Colgate, who was actually working as a soap boiler, but he realized that, you know, the process of the factory that he was working in, he realized that he could probably do a better job and refine the process. So he uh, quit his job and went on to create his own company, and that is how Colgate was formed. I think that Colgate has become so synonymous with toothpaste that for me, when I first read the name William Colgate, it sounded like a fake name, and it reminded me of that one scene in The Office. Sounds like a good dentist. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Crentist. Your dentist's name is Crentist. So while we know Colgate today for its toothpaste, William Colgate originally sold starch, candles, and soap in New York City in his first storefront. Interestingly enough, a lot of the early soap companies like Colgate would actually manufacture a whole bunch of different types of items, including like perfumes, shaving creams, or tooth powder in the case of Colgate. As the company picked up traction, it was able to uh, expand and diversify the inventory of products that was able to manufacture as they had factories popping up everywhere. From what I was able to learn, it seems like you could buy either tooth powder or toothpaste in the 19th century, but from the time when the paste was first sold by Colgate in 1873 and well into the 1920s, tooth powders were still readily available, but they did kind of decline and people tended to prefer the paste. But Colgate is actually a two-for-one deal in terms of this video, as in 1927 they merged with another company, a small company that you might know called 
palm olive. Let your beauty be seen. Yes, let your beauty be seen. Palm olive brings out beauty while it cleans your skin. This company is a little bit younger than our good friend Colgate, as the B.J. Johnson Soap Company started in 1864 by a man by the name of B.J. Johnson. The primary product was a type of soap that was made from a combination of palm and olive oil, and it became so popular that he changed the name of his company to the name of his best-selling product, Palm Olive. So, just like Colgate, they started with soap and have continued to expand ever since. I just want to pause really quick here to take a second to look at some of my favorite advertisements from Palm Olive, where they really lean into the whole ancient Greeks loved olive oil angle, and how you know, thanks to ancient Greece for inventing olive oil, but imagine how history would have changed if they had palm olive. I just love it. By the 1930s, business was booming, and the Colgate Palm Olive Company had factories in Canada, Latin America, Europe, Australia, and they were making everything from what is today their signature toothpastes, to laundry soaps and other toiletries like shampoos. It's really interesting and fun to look back into history and, you know, see the humble origins of these massive corporate conglomerates and see how it all kind of started because some guy didn't like the way that he was making soap at his job and figured he could do it better. It's just fantastic. <laughs> So we've talked about two products so far. We've talked about palm olive and we've talked about Colgate. And you know, both of those are kind of like bathroom area products. But I kind of want to mosey on into the kitchen and talk about something that you probably have in your pantry. I know I do. I want to talk about Fry's cocoa. <laughs> so fun fact, this stuff is actually almost 300 years old. Not this exact package, but you know, the company. In 1761, two men, Joseph Fry and John Vaughn, went into business together and patented a process for refining chocolate. After several successful decades of chocolate making, Joseph Fry died and the company was taken over first by Joseph Fry's wife Anna and then his son, Joseph Storrs Fry. He would go on to patent a method of grinding the cocoa beans using a Watt steam engine which helped with the refinement of cocoa beans in the chocolate making process. The most interesting thing to me about Fry's Cocoa is the fact that they were the first company to ever actually mold chocolate into a bar, mass produce it, and then sell it. It's something that we kind of take for granted today, or at least I take for granted today, and that there are just chocolate bars everywhere. And it's just, I can't imagine a world without that. <laughs> Over the decades, the company would change names as different people would leave the company, but eventually it would come back to its roots just as fries. But in those decades, they would produce dozens and dozens of different variations of their product, including variations in the flavors of the chocolate bar, and they also produced the first chocolate Easter egg in the United Kingdom in 1873, so that's pretty neat. Next, I want to talk about a cleaning product. Specifically, I want to talk about Bissell, which is a vacuum and carpet cleaner company. The vacuum market, I feel like in 2022 today is uh, kind of overrun by Dyson, which was founded in 1978, but there is probably still a chance that you have a Bissell vacuum in your house. The story of this company is actually pretty interesting and it has a lot of firsts throughout its history. The idea for a carpet sweeper came into fruition in the 19th century when a man and his wife, Melville and Anna Bissell, were growing tired of all of the sawdust that was gathering on the floor of their crockery shop. The carpets were never coming clean and sweeping was not the most efficient way to get dirt and grime out of a carpet. So Melville began tinkering, and lo and behold, the world's first carpet sweeper was created. So just for clarification, a carpet sweeper is like the grandfather of the vacuum. It's 
looks very similar to a vacuum. It's a, got a handle and it's like a box on wheels and it's got a couple of rollers that help to sweep and pick up dirt and grime. The carpet sweeper was so useful that the Bissells fully abandoned their crockery shop and patented Bissell in 1876. It is really interesting though because it wasn't just Melville Bissell who ran this company. His wife Anna helped to design the product so that it would be more appealing to women, and Anna was the one who understood the marketing side of things and how important that was for their business. When Melville died, Anna took over the Bissell company and became the first woman CEO in America. Even after she retired from the CEO position, Anna stayed on the board for Bissell until her death in 1934. Who would have thought that the history of vacuums, of all things, would be so neat? For our final product of the day, I want to talk to you about a little soap company called Pears. On the surface, you wouldn't think there would be that much to talk about when it comes to soap. Soap is soap. We all hopefully use it and it is the staple of the modern bathroom. However, the development of Pears, or rather the development of the Pears marketing strategy, is one that is fraught with imperialism and colonial attitudes towards the uncivilized and unwashed masses. On this channel we talk about controversial soap history. The company began simply enough. It was started in 1807 by a man by the name of Andrew Pears, and they became known as having the first mass-produced translucent soap on the market. The formula for the soap has changed over the years, and I feel like there's probably some niche perfume YouTube channel that's probably covered its history. I hope so. I hope that exists somewhere. The soap was so iconic at the time that it actually won a medal at the Great Exhibition in 1851. A few years after this initial success, a man by the name of Thomas J. Barrett came into the picture. The formula of the soap at this point was pretty iconic, but Barrett would be the one to go on and make this company a legend when it came to marketing. Pears enlisted a woman by the name of Lily Langtree, who was a socialite and actress of the late 19th century, to endorse the soap, making her the first woman to ever endorse a commercial item, possibly making her the world's first influencer. The company, of course, had newspaper ads and things like that, but they even went so far as to have little coins made that had their logo on them that they distributed across Europe. But perhaps the biggest marketing win for Barrett was the expansion of the British Empire. Where the British went, soap and civilization followed. The brand linked itself to the imperialism of empire, appealing to the wealthy white upper classes, and they sold not just a bar of soap, but a brand that helped to promote cleanliness as a first step towards lightening the white man's burden, or lightening the burden that empires such as the British had on colonizing and cleaning up the nations that it took power over. Soap became synonymous with civilization and the advertisements being shared in the newspaper, written by 19th century settlers and colonists, reflected this ideology, going so far as to show a young black boy being washed free of his blackness through the use of this product. So that's kind of all I have to say about Colgate and palm olive and pears and fries and Bissell. Um, but I had a lot of fun making this video and doing the research on all of these different products. And I might do a part two one day um, if that is something that you would like to see. Let me know in the comments and if there is a product that you think that I should have talked about or you should think I should talk about in part two, definitely throw that down there too. Is there something old that I missed that has somehow survived over the centuries that would be interesting to discuss? Let me know. So thanks for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble on about vacuums and soap and cocoa powder. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. And um, I'll see you next time.